Hello everyone. Ah, right. Well, so there's a new um, Gleam web framework called Wisp. Um, and I've got an old, old. It's not that old. Uh, I've got a web application that was in use last year. <clears throat> Um, and it was the ticketing system for a, a festival. Festival's going to come again next year. So I need to update it such that um, they can sell tickets again. And I think it would be a good opportunity to, to um, test Wisp out a little bit. So, what do I do? I'm just picking, I'm just picking some music to listen to first. Wicked. I don't. I, I feel like I shouldn't actually play the music to you because then I get in trouble. But I'm going to listen to the soundtrack to a game called Arcanum, which is an old uh, CRPG. Is that what they're called? Like the old Fallout games and stuff. It's made by the same people who made Fallout One and Two, and it's got a lovely soundtrack. Right, so, what should we do first? Have I got the latest version of this? Yes, I do. Let's get the latest dependencies. And... What do I want to do? I want to add Wisp. Wicked. So I'm expecting this whole process to be sort of miserable um, <laughs> pull, pulling on a thread of, of type errors for absolutely ages. So we just have to see how bad it gets, eh? Oh, I should tweet about this as well, shouldn't I, that I'm doing stuff? That would be wise. <clears throat> Gonna stream um, converting a Gleam web app to use Wisp, the new web framework. Ah, new web framework for Gleam. Come say hi. <clears throat> I presume, uh, I presume everything's working. Like no one said hi yet. Oh, good. Um, my code doesn't work. So that's complaining about this syntax, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, it hasn't for a little while now. L markdown conv. Oh. Oh, that's annoying. Oh no, the... I thought I released a bcrypt crate, so the, I think this is redundant. So what happens if I... Um, let's just delete this whole thing. And... bcrypt. I think that's what I called it. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe I should grab an older, like the previous version of Gleam, because that has an auto fix. Mm. Cool. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I need to move the chat window to be somewhere more prominent. How do I do that? There we go. I can actually see you talking now. How's it going? I've been playing with the audio settings as well, so let me know if it, um, yeah, let me know if it sounds all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That time unit. Uh... Work it. Gosh, I use way more FFI in this project than I thought I did. <clears throat> yeah, I'm using the latest. I'm using the main version, um, and on the main branch, um, the syntax has been. Completely removed and Gleam Fix is gone as well. Maybe I should just download the other one, like the current stable, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> Work hard, not smart. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't do what I do, everyone. Be, be good at programming. I'm starting to regret it though now, there's like so many, I'm using way more um, external stuff than I thought. I think this is probably the, f old, the oldest, um, yeah, definitely one of the oldest Gleam web apps that's still around at least. And as such, there's probably quite a lot of things in here where I, I wrote them in this and then I moved them to libraries, but then I never bothered to upgrade this um, project to use that. Ooh. Which was a bit silly of me. <laughs> Unlike Haskellers, we're not lazy around here. I thought you'd really like the um I thought you really like the iterator module. Who am I thinking of? Someone likes the iterator module a lot, that's lazy. Oh, I like that my glass looks quite see through. <clears throat> So this is cool because a lot of these functions um, I made Wisp in part from all the things I figured out in writing this and a few other web, web applications. And I'm noticing in going through all this, um, all these external functions that, um, yeah, a lot of the stuff's actually built into Wisp. So I think we should be like be able to reduce the amount of. Uh, should be able to reduce the amount of um, blah, 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 yeah external code quite considerably. Decrypt. 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 <clears throat> Wicked, getting close now. Um, so what should I do here? Um, 
Yeah, this is the project's got a different structure to what I recommend with Wisp as well. Where should I start with the conversion? I guess this root service. So I think that's meant to be called router. So where is that? Roots. Let's put that at the oops. Let's put that at the top level. And name that to router. Do 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 do. Router. Nice. And then, oops, let's rename that to handle request. Cool. So, um, Okay. This is going to be annoying. <laughs> so I'm going to just going to go through all of the, every single one of the handler functions and just convert it to use the WISP API rather than the, um, the raw Gleam HTTP API. Which shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. So, I can't wait. Come on. Thank you, Copilot. It's quite quite um, straightforward, this. I wonder if this is not good stuff to show. Oh, I've just realized that you can't actually see my terminal. Let's do something about that. Um, how tall am I? There we go. <clears throat> So yeah, this is going to be it's going to be fairly um, procedural, I think. Like, I don't know if that is good stuff to stream or not. Oh, and I've not put annotations in all these functions. Isn't that strange? Oh, that's too. Mm. Mm, this might be a larger job than I thought. Oh, this is cool. So I guess I define that in here. Oh, we've got loads of helpers. Okay, so where's the... You can get rid of this form one. We get rid of this as well. Oops, that's the wrong button. It does actually get used. That's interesting. Uh, because we passed JSON from it, so we don't need either of those things. Um, do 
Do, do, do. We don't need the bitstream body. We don't need the URL encoded body. Um, I don't want this try thing either, but I can get rid of that later. So, wisp require form data form require form. I'm hoping that when I finish this, the whole thing's going to have um, a bunch less lines of code, but not just because the utility module's going away, but like the actual, um, the actual router modules have gone away, gone away, have got smaller. I mean, this is a lot. <laughs> cool. Do, 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 do. Oh, Leandris sent a nice message on Twitter. He says the Gleam um, developer experience looks fantastic, was the word he used. That's lovely. Very kind of him. We're only just getting started. But yeah, it's not bad, is it? It's tolerable at the moment. <laughs> I'm, no, no, I'm, yeah. maybe, maybe I'm being mean I, I think as an English person I'm not allowed to be kind to anything Can, I'm not allowed to be kind about anything about myself whatsoever Hmm. I think that was a bug I just saw. It was, I was expiring a cookie, but the value of the cookie I was setting to an empty string, which I don't think is right. Because that, wouldn't I that just create another cookie with an empty string value in the same name? Like if you actually want to change one of the attributes on the cookie, you're actually going to give it exactly the same value as well, I think. Right, params, uh, form, form. Yeah, I don't like this try thing very much. I'm gonna have to get rid of that. I'll get rid of that later. I'll just convert the um the handler types for now. Cool. Uh, do 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 do. Ah, the try thing returns not what I want now. So I want to get rid of it later, but for now, let's just um, let's just try and fix it, shall we? <clears throat>
Hmm, I don't need any of these. Oops. Okay, that was a mistake. No, no, no. I don't need this either. The test for the module that I deleted because we can use the library now. I say wisp not web. Uh, ah, there's a there's a function for this now. It's um require methods. Cool. Mm -hmm. Did you mean? I could probably just um, replace this in the whole code base. Oops. There we go. Cool, so um, this is another HTML one. It's not, mm, stop that. Copilot's really fighting with me today. He seems to think there's a P. Oh no, it wasn't even Copilot, that was VS Code. Wicked. Yeah, there's a there's a um bug in the language server such that if there is a warning Is that right? Yeah, if there's a warning and you fix it, but there's still a type error, it doesn't get rid of the warning, which is very annoying. It's also getting a bit dark in here. I might just go turn the light on quickly. Hello again. Well, that was weird. I came on the wrong side. Should I should come on this side, really, shouldn't I? Oops. <laughs> I should get on one side and come off the other. This is probably not the best first impression of Wisp for people. Like, hey, you can use Wisp and you too can spend 45 minutes fixing, fixing type errors. Although, how, how often do you switch from one web framework to another, eh? It's just me that does that. Oh, that is really irritating.
Hey, welcome. I'm going to assume that um, El Eloise, is it Eloise? Is that how you pronounce that? I don't know. I'm going to presume that's a dog. <laughs> oh, it makes me giggle. Um, okay. Oh, cute. I don't know why I keep doing that. What button is that? Wicked. Um. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want the pipe operator, and it literally gave me the... Yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, computers are bad. It's learning what I want to do, though. That's nice. Expected a string builder. Okay, so where's this attendance form thing? Ah, it's because I'm not annotating stuff again. That's really annoying. What a fool I am. Oops. I don't know why it's I don't know why it stopped using my pipe shortcut. That's really irritating. That's years of muscle memory being completely messed with. Um Wow. Haley, Haley's completely right. Like Haley always complains when people don't put these return type annotations on, and for some reason I just haven't in this code base, and it's now really irritating because it means I'm not getting the type errors at the places I'm supposed to, or like at the most useful places. Come on, you can do it. No, I guess you can't. I think the, the biggest problem with um, Copilot is that it's just so unreliable. Like, when it works, it's fantastic, but the rest of the time it's just... It just isn't it. Um, oh, cool, this is another one where I can use... Do I even have Wisp here? No, this is another place where I can use... Um, one of the middleware it provides. Cool. Um... Oh, that's in, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Command line of the language server disagreeing about what the next type error is. <laughs> Great. Okay. Wow, well, this is big. What's it meant to be? Um, oh, it's just the it's just the same thing as always. Oops, not three hundred. There we go. Now they're in agreement. What do I keep pressing? I think having the microphone like here is like very slightly messing with me as well. Um, look at. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, cool. Do 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 do. Is there a way to make VS Code show you, like when you do the jump to the next problem, can you make it always do the errors instead of the warnings? I, I, like, I can't think of any situation in which I'd want to deal with warnings before I want to deal with errors. Wow, I'm gonna do that every time. Cool. Expected two arguments got three. Okay. Expected type string. Oh, that's interesting. What's from JSON? Oh, wow. Okay. That's not at all what I want. Uh, so I probably want to call this like from dynamic. It's a bit odd. And then the error is different as well. Okay, so. Cool. I don't think I want to fix the types, the tests yet. Haley, if you know the way to to make the jump thing do what I want it to do, please let me know. Or should I just I should just fix them now, shouldn't I? Uh, yes, I should. Um, is that what it's called? I don't remember what the what the API of the of the of Gleam JSON is. So, how do you decode? There we go. So, I could just pass in OK and then I always get the dynamic value back out, right? Decode. OK. And then I need to try that.
Weird. These time pairs are just not very useful. Um, what's this? What's okay? Return okay. Where does that? Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, I don't like how you've done that. That's rubbish. That's really bad. Let's not do that. Why am I doing that? Oh, no. I do slightly re regret putting the prefix Gleam on so many libraries. Um. Did you mean this? No, I did not. I wonder how far through we are. Oh wow, this is this is really old. Like there's still some bits that are not even using Nakai. It's using um moustache, which is what I use way back. Wow, that's like it's like two and a half years old, I think. Um Nope, not quite. Cool. Would you consider renaming method not allowed or using a label? Since it takes the allowed methods, it sort of reads the opposite of what it's meant to say. It does actually take it. If you set, you can, uh, you can write, you know, if you imagine there's a comma here, method not allowed, the allowed ones are, but um, I just haven't, I just haven't typed it in. I suppose you could like invert it so you could say something like um allowed methods. But then that sounds much more like the um the middleware that does this. Uh require method like that. Which works, but it doesn't really scale to more than one method because you still need to pattern match all the methods in order to um 
okay, so this example doesn't work, but you need to pat if you had more than one, you would still need to pattern match the worker which one it is. So in this case, it's only get. So actually, actually is better to be done like that. And at this point, I wonder why would you bother with having um, get dashboard and dashboard? You can just merge them all together like that. Oh, what is this? Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. I should have I should have muted. So why is this complaining? Oh, this is complaining because my serve static serve assets thing doesn't do what um it doesn't it's not the bleh, what am I saying? It's using a bit string instead of using a wisp uh whatever the response thing is called i can't remember body or something oh it says right here it literally says on screen body there you go so i don't want to fix that but i think that's a thing it's, but it's not called that it's called serve static and uh what does what does this what does it do at the moment? Um, there's no prefix. It is live. Hello, Io. How's it going? Doing well, I hope. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not together enough to um, to pre-record anything. Uh, so it doesn't. It doesn't say requests have to go under a certain like prefix in order to be caught. It just sends them to priv slash static. Okay, so we want to get the priv um, directory here. And I've got to pass in the name of the application, which is puck. Thank you. I'm glad. You, I'm really glad you like the developer experience. You're the second person to have said that um, since I started streaming, which is lovely. Uh, I I personally feel like this is it's just the just the tip of the iceberg. I feel like there's much more we can improve. Oh, it says there isn't a proof directory. Is this something I've not released yet? Let's have a look. How do you make a new tab in Safari? Um, oops. Nope, it's not a dot, it's a slash. Oh no, I haven't released it. <laughs> oh, okay, that's rubbish. Hmm, do I release it now? I don't think I want to release it on stream. That'd be terrifying. What if I accidentally shared my, um, what if I accidentally shared my hex password of everybody? That would be bad. Okay, so I'm going to keep using, I think there's a priv directory function here. Yes. Okay, so let's make that public. And then... Nope, that's not right from... So static directory is going to be the priv directory plus static. So we serve from the static directory and it will be under just the root. Cool. Uh, what is it moaning about now? So something in here is returning a bit builder still. What might it be? Oh, this method override thing can also go away. I 
and get away. Um, is it this rescue errors thing? Yes, it's this. So let's replace that with. I can't remember what it's called. Is it also good rescue errors? Oops. No. Um. So this this project is really making me wish we had a way to like categorize things in the sidebar. That'd be really nice. So like here's all the things to do with logging under one heading. Here's all the things to do with reading bodies. For um What was I looking for again? Ah, rescue crashes. There we go. Crashes. Cool. There we go. That was the problem. So I can also delete this module then, can't I? Haley did that the other day with Nibble. Uh, what is the thing that Haley did? Do you think Gleam should handle static files or should it delegate to Nginx? Um, I think it probably depends on like exactly how you want to set it up. Um, I think Mist is good enough such that it could it could easily compete with um, so that it could easily compete with Nginx. GitHub used to serve um, was it GitHub? I'm pretty sure it's GitHub used to serve GitHub pages with uh, Cowboy and Mist is faster than Cowboy. So it should be fine. Well, it would be fine. Um, I, if the choice is between those two, I would be tempted to do it with um, the Gleam application, just because it's just a bit simpler to bundle your, your application and all the static assets together. However, in a real production application, I would probably, um, I would probably just put it on a CDN and do neither of those things. And it also solves the problem of like when you're deploying, how do you how do you make it such that um, you don't end up the problem with like because requests will be going to server A and server B for a little while. How do you make sure that you know the request for the assets doesn't come from server A, but then when the request for the HTML goes to server A and the um, request for the JavaScript comes from server B, and you end up with a mix, mix match. <clears throat> Organize modules in docs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Haley, Haley made um, like she made a whole custom docs thing. I think that's probably in part frustration from the lack of flexibility with the, you know, the the built-in ones. I I imagine we can just look at any documentation that that Haley writes and just go, oh yeah, okay, we should probably make it so that people can do this more easily. Cause she's very good at that stuff. So it's like Go, in terms of like being able to serve static assets fast enough or in some other way. In the Hex doc, I thought, I thought she was going to upload it to Hex or was that just something that I said I was going to, I was going to help with and then didn't. I think that sounds quite likely. When it, yeah, when it comes to um, web performance, if it's just IO stuff, uh, we should be able to Go to toe to toe with go. I remember the the uh, benchmarks that Alex did on Mist. Um, uh, Mist outperformed the Go uh, standard HTTP server, which was nice. Check the link that I dropped. I don't know where that is. We'll have to find it later. Slightly bewildering streaming. There's like uh, there's lots of things to look at, and like there's a there's people looking at you as well. I'm gonna keep trying to fix things. Uh, oh yeah, so we don't need this rescue errors thing anymore. Get rid of that. I think we can also get rid of this. Oh, 
It's print. Oh, it does timing. It's actually slightly better than the one that's in West. Is it better? Is there any point in actually recording timing? I might keep this around and say like um, to do work out if we want to steal this timing stuff and put it in Wisp. Okay, so, oh, I've been typing in the window and you guys can't see it. Sorry about that. Well, I'm going back to it now, so it doesn't matter. Um, let's check out GotHub. How do you actually run? How do you run the application? So, app. Um, let's grab all this stuff. I, mm, that's interesting. That was weird. My text editor just locked up for a second. Uh, we don't need to configure the logger because we already have a log configure configuration thing. We don't need the random string because we're going to load that from somewhere. I presume that that is in this config thing. Uh, signing secret. Sure. Let's call it that. Um, <clears throat> Oopa, I've gone for 3000 in this application. Uh, router handle request. Hmm, yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's make it let's make it how we think it should be. Um where's the entry point again? Let's go to Buck. So Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's handle requests. Um. Oh, I've called it state. That's rubbish. Let's not call it state. So let's go to web. Let's not do that. So anytime you've got mm, let's call this context. Um, okay. Gleam superiority. Oh yeah. Um, I think Cowboy uses the send file syscall, so it's as fast as any solution. Yep, um, it does, and so does um, so does Mist. I'm using Safari. I'm sorry, Alex. I'm using Safari because I'm too nervous to have uh, Firefox open <laughs> on stream. <laughs> I'm worried. Oh, no. I'm still sharing Safari. Am I? No, I'm not anymore. I stopped. I must have been a while ago. I thought you, I thought you were saying, like, big up the Safari crew, but no, that's not what's happening. You're just pointing out my incompetence.
Okay. Oops, I don't know what I did there. <clears throat> I hear Safari's pretty nice these days. I wouldn't know. I use it when I stream. So like three times this year. Or if there's like a website that just doesn't work on um Firefox. Like Zoom for some reason never seems to work properly. And then I begrudgingly try and use Safari and then that doesn't work and then I just give up and use Chrome and it works mildly better. I don't understand why Zoom just doesn't work. Like is it me? And it's not just like this computer. I've got I use multiple different computers and and Zoom always has issues. Is it just that everyone else is tolerating it, tolerating it? Or is it just me? Am I using it wrong? What's this utility thing? Uh, guard, lazy guard, method override. This doesn't exist anymore. This doesn't exist anymore. What just happened there? Yeah, they re they really do want me to use the um, the desktop app. But I, I remember when I was working in a bank, and so I was actually paying attention to security stuff. There was a there was a thing where they found that um, Zoom was backdooring people's computers. So you install the client, it would also install a second secondary program that would just sit on your, that would like start a little HTTP server. And if you send a request to this HTTP server, it would download a program, particularly the Zoom installer, and then it would reinstall it for you. Um, and it would also fish your password. Like it would pop up a little uh, password prompt saying, MacOS needs to upgrade, put in your password, but it wouldn't be the operating system, it would be Zoom. Like really horrible stuff. And as such, I'm never, I'm never going to install Zoom on my computer, ever. Oh no, I don't trust those people. Hey Mark. With state, no, I don't want to call it that. With context. Oops. Oh no. So yeah, Zoom bad. Don't use Zoom. Ugh. I mean, they all seem bad now. I mean, it, I don't like that they all give you 45 minutes or whatever it is and then kick you out. Really irritating. Not that I ever use any video call software anymore. I've got, I've got such... Um, video called burnout like uh, if i join one i you know, immediately feel like it's a, like a really bad dull meeting like even if it's meant to be something fun it's like oh, i can't be bothered bring back landline telephones that's an interesting idea i might struggle with that one because i like to when i when i'm on the phone i just start walking and so if i have like a 45 minute conversation with someone i just suddenly realize that i've been walking for 45 minutes without paying any attention to where I'm going, and I'm just somewhere in London. <laughs> like, okay, I've never been to this, I've never been to the, the north side of Brent before. What's even in Brent? I have no idea. Um... <laughs> and I'm normally just like, oh, I just, I, I, yeah, I'm not dressed to be outside at all. I'm like, I'm just like sitting at home, like, oh, I'm on the phone, I'll just stop walking. And I'm just like in some random place. Uh, I'm getting a little nervous about how many things I've changed. Mm -hmm. 
it would be nice to run the test, say. Maybe it was foolish to rename this. Maybe I should have got it working and then started renaming things. That would have been a lot smarter. Oh well, I'll learn one day, maybe. Probably not anytime soon. Imagine a Gleam extension like that IntelliJ feature where it shows method arg names in code not using them. I'm not sure what that means. Like I've never I've not used IntelliJ in like five years or something. Where it shows method arg names in code not using them. What do you what do you mean? Could you give an example? I should definitely spend a bunch of time using um, like all the IntelliJ products just so I can work out what stuff we want to try and steal because they're, they're, they're fantastic editors. Really, really, really good stuff. Have we done all the state yet? No. Oops, helps if I can spell context. I cannot. Sent you an image on Discord, okay. Oh, wicked. Yeah, can I open that in? Copy link, yeah. Now I can put it in Safari. How cool is that? That is lovely. Yeah, we should we should one hundred percent steal that. And um, whoa, how does that work? What what kind of what kind of image is this? <laughs> That's a it's a ping. Safari can just like copy text directly out of pings. That's amazing. Look at that. Wow. Maybe I should, wow, Firefox sucks. This is great. Yeah, uh, Rust is it as well. We should, we should definitely, um, I think it's in language. I think it's in the language server protocol. So we should 100% add that. There's a little, um, oh, that looks weird, doesn't it? Ooh. <laughs> um, there's, a li there's a little difficulty at the moment with, um, How do I say this? We don't have fault tolerant parsing yet. So it can be a little tricky to know things about the code as it's being edited. Um, but it's not a huge problem. We, we, yeah, let's 100% have that in future. I'm just still amazed by you can select things in, in a ping. That's super cool. Right, back to... Um, Type errors. Apple, good. Um, oh, I don't know about that. It's a technology company. Is it possible for them to be good? I don't know about that. Back to this code. Bool. App, I'm, I'm, you know, I've said that I've not, I've said that Apple not good, but I am using an Apple computer right now. Context. Hmm. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. 
also like there's a nice thing about having um there's something quite nice about having technology that is uh kind of inflexible in that it for me at least it, like it's it removes that temptation for me to try and make it better like if i didn't have gleam i'd probably spend an awful lot of time customizing um linux installs because it's just so satisfying really nice but like completely it's not pointless fun is never pointless but like it's, i've got things to do i've got stuff to do i've got to make i've got to make gleam glem oops did i just mess it up i did just mess that up that's annoying It's interesting how I've put the user on the on the context. That's interesting. I've not really given a thought to how users w would work in Wisp yet. Uh, boo! I also I keep finding myself doing this, like selecting everything and then sorting them. I think we really do need to build that into the formatter at some point soon. Context. Is it? Is it? Is that true? I don't believe you. I think it is used. I really need to make this warnings thing better. It's like it type errors result in unused code warnings thing. It won't be too hard. I don't have any, I have no excuse to be honest. How many states have I got left? Oh, loads. Can I just replace all of these? Yeah, doing this manually is, is extremely foolish. Let's just swap all of them. And like, if any of them are wrong, we can just fix that. Um, I think they are okay though. Is that like a match whole word button? That's quite useful. Let's do that. Did you mean? Oh, let's do the same thing, but for the capital as well. State. Context. I should have just done. I should have just done this immediately. That would have been much cleverer. Welcome to my lesson on how not to write code. Uh, if we're doing a test module, does that mean all the other ones work now? Hmm. What does this function do? Ah, okay, so we're not mm, interesting. Um, mm, what's the best way to do this? Uh, um, Yeah, it has to be it has to be with this testing um, fella. Mm. What if I just made the test module? Yeah, I'm not into that. Is it really not used? That isn't used, okay. Is this used? No, it's not used, okay.
I thought I changed all of these. Didn't I do this? I guess I didn't. Or I've accidentally undone it in this file. What? I definitely did this. Okay. Um, <laughs> so these are all going to be post requests. So testing dot post. Incorrect arity. You meant to give it headers as well. Okay. <laughs> Where does context come from? To do. Need to make context. <clears throat> Oops. Sweet. Expected three. Why does it expect three? It's because, um, <clears throat> okay, what is the testing API? I don't remember. Wisp, uh, da, 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 testing. So if I want to post JSON, what do I have to pass in? It's just JSON, it's JSON. That's, an, that's, hmm. That's annoying. I kind of, yeah, I want to also be able to give it as a string builder. Hmm. I need like, I, I need like a JSON fragment function. Does that exist? Whoa, what did I just do? Uh, clean JSON. No, that's a shame. Hmm. 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 Okay. Um, I'm going to make an issue for that in the Gleam JSON repo. Fragment function for inserting pre formatted JSON string builder into document. There we go. But for now, I'm going to have to use, um, for now, I'm going to have to use. Post? My body's got to be a string. Okay. Does this return a string? That looks like a string to me. So, payload. That's a little bit ugly. Hmm, okay. Type mismatch. I said config found context. Okay. And all requests. Oh yeah, okay, so um, let's make this the same shape that we expect actually in um, Wisp. So we have a. Let's go to web. 
So web is meant to have a function called middleware. It takes a request and it returns a response. And um, handle the Cool. So, and the middleware uh, is these fellas. Uh, no, that's not right. Um, that is meant to be the request. That's what that's meant to be. Print requests, no, um, wisp dot log requests. Is that what that is? Log request, apparently, singular. Not sure about that name. And database with connection, config database. Ah, we don't have a, we don't have a, hmm. <clears throat> That's interesting because we need to have the database here. This is also interesting because it um hmm. it opens a connection and uses it once and then it doesn't use it for the rest of the duration of the request. That seems a bit wrong. <clears throat> that doesn't seem right to me. Does it use it here though? No, it doesn't. Okay. So, how does this work? Auth get user get user get user from session. Hmm. I really want to be, I want to be able to say this. Really. Is that what I want? I'm not sure that is what I want. I don't have the conf I don't have the config in this state in this place either. So what actually is does it have it has a database connection? Am I expected to make the context before the middleware stack is called? Uh Maybe, hmm. Yeah, okay, I think that's cool. So I think what we want to do is have the middleware also take the context, which I think is pretty reasonable. There's gonna be lots of times at which you're gonna need a database connection in the middleware stack, for example. And then we can just pass in context.database. Um, why don't I have auth anymore? Is it because I did something silly? Oh, am I gonna have a, I'm gonna have circular dependencies now. 
Yay, look at that. These things form a cycle. Ooh. Oh dear. That's bad, isn't it? <laughs> oh no, my design is my designs are rubbish. Is there a reason not to have Yeah, that's rubbish. That doesn't work. So we put the middleware stack in with the uh, router. I think that makes sense. Why is why are these two different things? This seems silly to me. Right, so let's get rid of the service thing. Let's put handle. Request at the top, and oh, something's still moaning at me. Um, where web doesn't depend on auth anymore. There we go. It doesn't use static. Um, cool. So this is this router thing. Let's call this for handle request. And then we'll pop the middleware stack in here. And then let's put our... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure about this, but I'll come back to that later. Gosh, a lot of stuff. VS Code is lagging. I'm not sure what that's about. I'm not sure I've ever had that before. Oh, I've used a ton of memory. What is using my memory? My memory is being used by WhatsApp. <laughs> Thank you, WhatsApp. Much appreciated. See you, dude. Have have fun on the job. And Discord. I should probably close Discord as well. Discord's using three gig of memory. That's dreadful. I'll close. Um... I, yeah, to be fair, I shouldn't have all these messaging apps open while I'm doing this stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, config. Oh, we don't have, we don't have the config, but do we have it in context? Yes, we do. But then what do you do with the user? Why do I have a user here? Is that meant to go on the context? User. I guess that's meant to go in the context. Web context. Um, someone's beeping their horn outside. Okay, I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put this on the context. On router. I wonder if it should be roots now rather than router. Oh, that's interesting. So where is, uh, Uh, 
Did you mean database? Is it like current user? Yeah, it is. What's this web thing you're talking about? Um, expected two arguments, got three. I really need to improve the error messages you get out of use. Like use is fantastic, but yeah, that, that um, wrong number of arguments error is, is clear as mud. Absolutely dreadful stuff. Things can go on Wisp as well. Do do do. Right, slowly, slowly getting there. How many of these have we got in the code base? Oh, twenty. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to fix them. Uh, I don't want to do it. Okay. Um. You googled it and you couldn't find anything um the the like slight latency between me saying things and people replying means i have never got any idea what it was i said <laughs> when people reply <clears throat> tess tess tessie technique testing Interesting. This thing. Get. Oh, I am not live. Says Haley. I don't know what that means. Hello, I'm back in the present. Oh, did you like pause it and then walk away and come back and then we're in a different place? I do that all the time with streams. And then get really confused. Did you mean config? No, I didn't mean config. <laughs> Did you mean hockey? No, I didn't. Hmm. Why does this one function construct a database connection? What? I feel like it's not meant to do that. Oh no, it is. Oh wow, it's just, it's not even a web thing. It's just like some completely unrelated thing. Okay, so we just don't construct a database connection anywhere for web at the moment. That's a bit silly. Now we do. Uh, payload. Mm -hmm. Oh, got a set and query. That's interesting. Okay, so interesting. Nope. 
it's not called string build, it's called string body. And I think I think this works now plausibly. Did you mean Jason? I did not mean Jason. Did you mean usage? Yeah, there's all sorts of interesting stuff here, like... Um, hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay. I think these are all gets. That's fine. Oh. Why are you complaining at me? Because I want to put that in, but I also want to say test is money tests. So this is a JSON API, if I remember correctly. Uh, it says webhook. Yeah, that's JSON. Uh, content type, context, content type. Oh, come on. There we go. That's not true. It's used right there. I can see it. The, doing a big refactoring session is actually quite useful because it's um, yeah really highlighting a bunch of problems with the language server. Like it's it's getting all right. It's getting better, but um, yeah the the way these warnings stick around is really irritating. <clears throat> like, I really don't care about unused code stuff when it doesn't type check yet. Like we should just turn them off entirely. Cool. Hey, maybe enable them for prod builds. Are there even prod builds in Gleam? Um, sort of. Um, if you publish a dependency, it builds in a, a prod mode, but it doesn't actually do anything different. In, fu in future, I think we're gonna start doing some like small optimizations and things in a production mode. Oh, also if you build what's called like an Erlang, Erlang shipment, which is like a rubbish version of a release, 
that also builds in the, the prod mode that doesn't do anything different, really. Um, I think the warnings are actually really useful, but just not when they're... Unused things warnings are really useful in dev, but just not when there's clearly more important stuff. Like if your code doesn't type check, then you shouldn't... You're not going to care if you've not used something or not. Cool. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Don't need that, don't need that. Um, is there anything in the language server protocol for ordering warnings or is it first come first served? I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know how it works. I find the language server specification quite confusing. Um, it's a lot of me sort of reading it and going, oh, oh I don't know, and then, stum and then trying things and stumbling through it. I feel like everyone else seems to understand it much better than I do, and I don't really understand like how they learn these things. I'm definitely just missing something. Exactly, yeah. Haley's, Haley's really hit the nail on the head there. Like A lot of these unused, all of these warnings about to be an unused are because the bit where it's used ha can't be successfully type-checked, which is stupid. Um, so it's, it's, there's like three things that are, that are annoying me. First off, that bug, that's rubbish. Second thing is, I don't care about warnings at all when there's a type error. And third, it doesn't successfully clear them. It doesn't successfully clear warnings if there's a type error in some situations. So it's just result. It's just come up to the point where like pressing F8 in VS Code is not giving me the experience I wanted to do. So I'm like scrolling through this list to find the ones that seem important to me, clicking them instead, which is not. It's it's not the one. It's not what I'm into. Oh dear me. Um, oh, if you manually filter the list, can you do that? How do you do that? <gasps> oh, Haley, you're, you're, oh, wow, you're a genius, Haley. Let's see what it does. Oh, maybe not. No? It did go to the error first, though. I mean, that, that's, actually, that's actually correct. And that's also actually correct. And that's also actually correct. No, that's not. I, mm. If you manually filter the address, the FX should just ignore the warnings. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Did you mean click on this little filter button here? Oh, you can't see the drop down on the stream. No, you no, you can't. Okay, so I've got toggle warnings unticked. Um, and it's, yeah, it still doesn't do what I want it to do. What about control shift F12? Gosh, wait, how do I even do that? Uh, control, control shift, which one's F12? I don't even, I don't even know how to do it on this keyboard. So what am I doing for eight? It's all muscle memory, so I don't know what the actual buttons are. So that's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, draw shift F twelve. Nothing, because that's the wrong button. Eight. Nothing. I'm not sure I'm pressing the right buttons. Oh, it's probably. Would it be command? Command shift. I don't know. Like, I mean, look at my look at my keyboard. Like, can you tell me which one I'm going to be pressing? Because I don't know. I really like this keyboard, but if there's ever a button I don't press very often, I have absolutely no idea how to get to it. And every now and again, it just I accidentally press some modify key that set the whole keyboard onto a different mode that I don't have to get out of, and I got to unplug the keyboard and plug it back in again. What's Twitter saying? Sorry, what's X, the coolest social media site in the world? Um, it, 
Is that Z Zitter? Z Z Zetta? Uh, shitter. Yeah, it is. It is. It is pretty shit, isn't it? It's just so bad. How does a, How does a man in his fifties with all that money have the taste of like a thirteen-year-old boy? So edgy. So cool. I bet his forum signatures were fantastic back in the day. Uh, attendance form logged in test. Gosh, I'm not particularly enjoying fixing all of these. Only 10 more though, that's not bad. Wait, what? What does it say get? A get method and a. Okay, this is just a bug. This is just a bug. I can fix the bug there. <laughs> oh, very good, Alex. I don't. I don't. I'm trying to read the things people are saying because I don't know how to. I don't know if it shows up or anything on the video. Well, no, it doesn't show up in the video, but I don't know if it like scrolls at the side. But if people are watching on a device where you can't see chat, I like to say things aloud. But I don't know how to how to um how do you pronounce cursive? How do you pr pronounce a different font? How did you how did you get the different font? Oh look! Oh look! I'm do. Oh, it's a form, so I can use post form. Oh, that's exciting, isn't it? It's like it's like I've actually made the thing to work properly. Form form. Cursive, cursive font generator, brilliant. So like, it's not just a mere font, you've got Unicode, Unicode has cursive in it, great. Of course it does. Hmm. No, I was wrong. It's not called post form. Post form data? Ah, it's because it says test, test, testing. I might rename that module testing, just so my, my typo is correct. Test testing. Test. Expected three arguments got two. Oh yeah, headers. Ooh, that sounds more correct, doesn't it? How many of these have I got left? Eight, we're good. <clears throat> wicked. Um Okay, so what's this what's this problem about? Um Oh, oh, I see. Okay. The, um, does it only happen once? Oh, that's so annoying. The error type is different between each case, so I need to discard it first.
That's not what I wanted. Uh. Oh, okay. That's annoying. Hmm, I'm not super happy with that. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. Sweet, getting closer. Okay. Just form? Is that what I called it? Nice. Expected something. Oh, that's not right, does it? These, I've really mangled these tests. They are rubbish now. But that's okay. That's, that's future me's problem. Uh, post form. Hey, one failure, two failure, a whole bunch of failures. Okay, could be worse. What are the things that are failing? Um, so if you're logged in, it fails. If you're not logged in, it fails. If you're logged in, it fails. Okay, I think there might be something wrong with logging in. Not logged in. Oh. Um. So the tests, let's have a look at one of these tests. Uh, what's the simplest sounding one? Web test. So the logged in one, Okay, so it creates a logged in context and then we call handle request. That sounds sensible. However, um, the router in the middleware stack looks up the user. So the, the tests are working in a way where um, the user is expected to already be fetched and not be fetched from the database. But the um, application wants to pull them from the database. Okay. Okay, so, mm, interesting. Can I be bothered to fix it? <laughs> I'm feel, I feel like maybe it should come from the database. Um, every time. It is a bit annoying in that it means you get like one extra database query per um, request that's going to go to like in tests though. That doesn't sound like much, but like if it's on every single one, I guess it could add up. Hmm. What does, um, what does Phoenix do? I'm not sure I have a Phoenix app to check to hand. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to grab a snack. I'll be back in a few seconds. 
Boop, 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 bye. Hello there. I'm I'm back. And hopefully you can hear me still. Cool. Okay. So, um I think maybe the proper way to, to do it would be that um, it loads the user from the database because that's mo most like what the application would do in reality. However, I'm not sure exactly what the API should be for that yet. And I also am nervous about making more changes to the application. I really would just want to like get it working. Pretty sure, Andy says, pretty sure Phoenix fetches users from the DB over time. Yeah, it, do, it does seem sensible, doesn't it? Like, why would you have a special backdoor for, for creating the user? Hey, welcome, Andy. Okay, I'm going to go, with, I'm going to, I'm going to keep that in mind as like, that's probably what we want to do in future. And maybe in like a WISP guide of like how to do authentication. Or if we've got a boilerplate for that, that's what it should do. But I don't know what the test API for that, for that would be, yeah. Hmm. Eating on stream, that's a faux pas, isn't it? We probably shouldn't do this. Oh well. I'm hungry, it's fine. Is that or I stop? Okay, so let's change the middleware. <laughs> Pirating Photoshop to make a banging forum signature. I really wish um I really wish I still had my hard drive from like my my teenage computer because I had so much like random bits of rubbish art that I'd made and I'd love to see them. I've absolutely no idea what I'm pretty sure my dad threw out that uh, that computer which I'm I'm, I'm p permanently irritated about. Like why would why would you do that? Like always, always keep the computer. What is the hard drive? I used to make pixel art. That was my thing um, when, I was a, when I was a wee kid. I used to read um, the old that Mega Man webcomic, the, fir the first ever one, I believe it was, called Bob and George. I've got very fond memories of all those um, early Mega Man sprites. Bob and George in particular was such a... Was a I've, I tried to read a bit of it like a year or two ago. I was like, wow, this is dreadful. Absolutely awful. <laughs> but I think, I think the... Uh, I think the standards were were different. The expectations were different back then. So, like, what what was entertaining on the internet? Okay, so oh, you've got oh, 
wonder if I could find my photo bucket account. How would I do that? How could I? Hmm. It'd be amazing if I could. Th Does photo bucket still exist? Photo bucket. I don't remember what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Hmm. This doesn't look like what I remember it looking like. I mean, I don't remember it looking like anything, but it definitely didn't look like this. What is this? Absolute rubbish. It's weird. Photo bucket's really old, and this looks like someone threw it together in like fifteen minutes. Is this the same font that we use? Is this the same font that we use in the Gleam website? <laughs> oh. I mean, it might be the old photo bucket. Maybe? Never forget Crocs. What? <laughs> oh, forget Crocs. I mean, if this is the real photo bucket, it would really check out that they are um, going hard on the nostalgia. Wow, what a weird, what a, what a really quite bizarre. New management. Yeah, really odd. Wait, how does this work? This is newer than this. What are you doing, Twitter? Oh well. But yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure my pixel art's lost to the age, which is a shame because I, I think the. Um, that was probably the the pinnacle of my my human achievement. Like all the code stuff pales in comparison to the the little pixelated goblins I used to draw. On Twitter, you need to be logged in to see tweets in chronological order. That makes no sense. That makes absolutely no sense. Why on earth have they done that? Is that to prevent you from scraping? Because I find when I log in, I can only see like 20 people's tweets anymore. You can't, I can't, I can't view old, old. I can't view conversations and things people posted like a week ago. Which is really sad. It was like, you know. There's a lot of culture in those tweets. How do you get to them? Or like the accounts of people who have died and stuff like that. You know, that's really important stuff. Don't trust corporations, you know, apparently. That's the takeaway. Export your data. Right, let's fix this um, rubbish, and then I'm probably about ready to stop. So the middleware gets the user from the session. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So let's go to app. No, it's not called app. It's called buck. Um... Oh, VS Code is like locking up. There we go. User. USSR. Ooh. I'm, it's a bit early for me to start um, ranting about communism, I think. What's going on here? Um.
Hey. Oh. I still got failing tests. Wow. That's a bit sad. Wait, eight failing? That's the same number of failing. Maybe I was just completely wrong with my um with my theory as to what the problem was. Okay. So web tests. Costs. <clears throat> Not logged in. So it's also got these really rubbish assertions that I really need to fix. I mean, boy, look at that! Look how look how awful this is. So, uh, ah, because now redirects are three o oh, th three o oh, three. Is that right? Not like a one really nice website for this. So, 302 is found. Therefore, the same URL should be used by the client for future requests. Change temporarily, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's another URI. Da, 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 da. Um, the server sent its request to direct the client to get the requested resource at another URI with a get request. So this one could potentially... If you post it, it could post to the new place. Is that the idea? I always forget about what, how I always forget how the redirects work. Yeah, I think three three sounds good. People can just have a go at me later if that's wrong. Or I can just copy what Phoenix does. That's probably the smartest, isn't it? Also, 303 sounds cool. Hey. Okay, one more. Webhook. Uh, where is that? Money test. Wrong method. Oh, I've said, I've said post. Um, let's say patch. Boom. Once the tests, oh no, no, not the test. Let's try that again. Once the types check, it just works. But it said it didn't, but like it nearly did. Definitely could have been worse. Once the types check and also you fix everything that you broke, it just works. It'd be cool if the language server could delete all the unused things for you. Hey, that's not bad. Oops, I haven't committed yet. I haven't put anything silly in here, have I? Um, convert to use Wisp framework. Um, are you using NeoVim mode in VS Code? I'm definitely using our Vim mode, but I'm not sure which one I'm using. Just the straight up Vim one, I guess. It seems okay. Like, it's good enough. But yeah, I'm, I'm completely incapable of using a text editor that doesn't have a Vim mode. I would really like to use uh, Helix, because it looks cool. It looks like... I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of GUIs. Is that true? I guess I am these days, but like, his, traditionally I've preferred TUIs. Um, So it would be really nice to uh, use Helix because it looks like a lot of those sort of like modern conveniences and like really doubling down on the language server thing, but still be command line based, which sounds great. But it uses like a different modal editing thing that I just don't really know how to how to get along with. So let's just have a look at what that what the application looks like after that. 
Oh. What's going on here? This is the wrong page. Oh no, it is the right page. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not logged in, so I don't see anything. Uh, how do you, how do you shrink things? Well, the layout looks different. Now oh, it's over here. Okay. I'm sure I could clean this up more. I'm sure there's like loads of things in here still that I don't necessarily need to be doing. And this looks a bit funny. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure that's where that should live. Um, no, I think that's probably okay. You, do, you probably do want the context to be like built up outside of the, I was going to say the web context, but that's confusing. Outside of the, the space that is the web part of the program. Yeah, Vim, Vim has ruined me, yeah. It really does do that to you, doesn't it? Oh, okay, this is annoying. This has changed so much, it's like showing up as a completely new file. So I can't diff it very much. Can I, what if I hide workspace, does it, is it smarter then? Oh my, f I'm using my phone as a camera and I've just got a notification saying it's about to run off battery. It's a good, good thing I'm finishing, eh? How long have I been going for anyway? Two, two hours and ten minutes? That's not too bad. Um, useless. I can't see a diff here. What's the point? Absolute rubbish. I'm sure there's more things I could strip out of this web thing as well. Oh, and all the all, all, OK or 404 stuff I want to get rid of as well. OK. I guess it comes down to like how much refactoring do I actually want to do here? Like it's using Wisp. Do I want to like try and get it to use all the same patterns that I'm using in the example apps? I probably do. And then how long that was going to take me though? It's not too different. It's pretty similar, but I don't, I'm definitely not making full use of everything it can do just yet. Yeah, okay. Are these all tests now? Yeah. Okay. Not a bad start. Cool. Okay. Well, um, thanks for coming and joining me, everyone. Uh, yeah, if you want to see the changes, um, I, I don't know how I can share this with you, but if you go to Team Balloonicorn slash Puck on GitHub, you'll find it. Uh, yeah. See you around, gang. Have a lovely evening. How do I turn this off? <laughs>